All right, welcome to another animation analysis. And today I'm gonna take a look at the new Soul trailer that came out actually just this morning. Since I was about to record something, I thought let's actually do this. So I think a couple of things that I saw in that trailer were really, really cool. I'm also a big fan of more simplified characters and the look of that and how they're animated. And there are a couple of visual things in this that are really, really cool. And it's always great to see and watch things in slow motion step by step seeing the squishiness the squash and stretch of those characters and it's always cool to see little details you know even this is very tiny but as the body goes in even the feet have still a little bit of extra animation when it relaxes i just love all that detail stuff there very cute designs love the renders love the look of this i always see the lines and the color changes it's very cool and as I recommend to all my students, it's always cool to see in trailers when professional animators animate, to just even look at things like blinks and look at frame by frame, how is their blink? For how long? Like, do you want to be active so you don't have that much of an ease in when the lids open up and rest there? Like, just kind of practice and, I mean, don't put that in your reel, but look at that, copy that, look at your curves and study how this looks when you have a blink where the eyes kind of lead over. So they chose to the audience, I'm going to look over there into this with clean hand poses. It's just really, really interesting to watch. And this was interesting too. Like I'm always a big fan of having a direction on the character. That was kind of interesting to see when do they move forward? When do they move back? Like we look at your overall character movement and what that means. So for her, if you look at her, you can see through all of this, she has an overall movement of going forward. As you can frame through, you can see arms go back, but the body keeps going forward. So if you play this in real time, because she's interested, she wants to get to know more about this character. And then the interest, you can show this by leaning forward, but also keep going with the moving hold forward, as opposed to let's pretend this person is something else and she's not so sure about, about this guy. She could lean back and have that moving hold going away from this person to get more distance or social distancing as the new word is here. And again, different type of blinks. You can look at how slow they are, how fast they are. I also really like the detail of the lines here, but then how it fades out on the feet. Just interesting, different styles where like some parts almost feel 2D. Some things are just a bit more stylized and simple. It's really cool. And then we get back to this role, which has really cool renders as always. Look at that. Oh, ever since, look at that. Look at a widescreen format like Toy Story. Like interesting lens choices there. It's just very... I love renders like this. It's just so interesting to see. And again, as you frame through, you can see as the character has the smile and the shoulders go up and the arm go up, you can see just a little bit of going up in the nostrils and the cheeks. Super, super detailed. It's very cool. Nice, clean, simplified hand poses. So we're getting into triangles. So it's technically not simple because you have these overlapping fingers, but visually, if you just kind of squint your eyes or you put in your um, silhouette there, you can see that they're still fairly simple. You still have color silhouette. You still have enough break between all those elements to get a cleaner silhouette. Look at that render. I'm just fascinated by renders like this. The skin shader, the metal shaders, the, the hair, and then with the blur, the depth of field. I love all this. Even shots like this that seem simple and short, there's still a lot of complexity in there. If you look at the mouth, just what the corners are doing here. See, you have a little bit of inhale. You can see how the chest leads the action there. There's a lot of inhaling there as the, and then the body expands and goes up and it's kind of like the mouth goes a little bit together for the, for the inhale, but then goes out and you can see how it just reveals the teeth a bit and you can see that corner but there's a little bit of a smile in there it's watches in real time again little things it's a small shot but at the same time got so many little details in there they're great to observe <laughs> love, love how that mouth is still there kind of trailing that opening there love the expressions everyone's going what is going on there so cute. Look at that. I know, this is one of those when I do the uh, trailer reviews where all you hear from me is, look at that. Cool character designs, though. There's a lot of distinct and different faces. 
always cool to see. That doesn't feel very generic. Same thing here, different type of hold and into a smile. Again, all those little things that I would recommend students to go through. And, and you can always have a little a library of people smiling, people blinking, people inhaling. Just see how different companies are doing this, different animators and different styles in, in movies. And then it's also cool to track your arcs and see how it goes down and has that extension again with the clean triangle shape of your hand pose. Look at that, it's a beautiful pose. And then coming up with a slight hold and then coming back up into this, leading into, bam, into that burst with the offset on this also because it's heavier and holds this. So cool. Love this, look at that. Look at the detail in the city. That's what I loved about Spider-Verse 2, where it, just, it really feels like a city that's that has life to it and their history to it. And it's not super clean. Sorry, I was completely distracted as I was saying this by that lean in with that knee to then come out into that step. That's great. Oh, come on, look at that render. Here I am again, come on. Love that look. Oh, how dare he, a cover on the iPhone. <laughs> I use covers all the time. And for fast motions like this, it's cool to see what are the breakdowns, what shapes do you see when you have something really fast every now and then, you can't really register all the changes in the posing. So when this happens, sometimes you just catch a glimpse. So sometimes you just have to kind of emphasize a specific pose. And the cool thing is this, with the light catching this hand here, that really stands out. So if you watch this, I definitely read that frame. So when you have fast motions and you might even have motion blur, I don't know if this is in your student shot or wherever, whatever you work on, you have to be aware of, well, if I do a lot of blurring, you're not gonna see things. You're not gonna see a shape. You're not gonna see a facial expression. So you have to kind of decide, well, what moves are slowed down so that there is no blur, so we can read things. And then on top of that, you got the lighting and then you have just the expression of, whoa. And even on one frame, you see, the offsets of one finger just to give it a less of a default hand pose there or finger pose and then we're back into this and i love the change in style look at that that's a cool frame just the details of all this just simplifying this and then you get into the whole thing about cameras where it feels a bit out of control so you get a bit more handheld there so it's not so static and locked which, of course, is all me reading into things and I could be totally wrong. I was going to people do this. Well, that's actually not what we intended, but that's what I what I take from this. But I love the just the, the frame with the graphic nature of this. And of course, big actions love to frame through this where you have your clean posing through the body. And I love this here. This is something that why I wanted to record is because you have this kind of invisible wall. I mean, to some degree, we see what, what there is, but I love this where you have, it's up to you as an animator, depending on your spacing, on your body mechanics, reactions to something where it's somewhat invisible. I mean, you can make this more invisible for your exercise, but where you sell the properties of, of a character inter that in the character interacts with, if that makes sense. Meaning that you could be walking on something sticky and then it's ice and how you change that stickiness, how the foot goes and then steps on ice and then slips. That's all up to you clearly since you're the animator. But I like seeing this. I like feeling the change of something that's purely based on your animation and your timing and your spacing. Sorry, I'm nerding out, but I love that stuff. I love how you can do all of this here. It's very cool. I love this too. That's that look, the look of all this and then how it bursts through and then i love all this look at that this is what struck me when i was watching this trail just that change and then we're getting into this type of style i just love is when the animation just takes it a step further and just pushes the visual style and then it turns almost into drawings very cool so neat i love all this just that the painterly feeling of it Slightly blurred, but always certain sections that are clean, just for enough detail. I love all this. This is so me nerding out. We're going, okay, okay. Oh, look at that. Come on. Again, I'm back to being, oh, come on. Love this. Look at that frame. Love the look. Love the colors. 
So cool. <laughs> Again, you can see the stretchiness over how many frames you might have. Bam, like over one frame, a big pop so that you really have that snappiness, but you can still relax into somewhat of an ease in where it's a bit more relaxed this way and even the body relaxing going down. And then you got this. Come on, I love it. Look at that. So curious how they animated this. If this was in 2D or a 3D rig that just has controls and then it's rendered flat like that, which probably 3D, I don't know, but I love it. Look at that, I love this, that then your lines are like that. I mean, look at that. So cute. The look of all this. This too, the eyes. You're back to bouncing balls, basically. The little tiny hops as it runs. It's cute. Very cool concept too, of looking at in terms of is a life worth living, even though you know how it's going to end. It's cool too. Yeah, absolutely in love with this, that style. And you can see how the lines kind of change in terms of what is seen, and not seen in terms of the silhouettes. It's really neat. And back to big moves with squash and stretch. You can see the squishiness and how it comes back up with the scrambling of the legs. Definitely something to study and go through frame by frame. I love that. <laughs> look at that. Oh, I definitely want to go through it frame by frame and look at... If you do something this fast, again, you have moments where it's blurry, you're not going to see much. But then when it's somewhat slower so that the blur goes away, you can really push the hand poses for a read. And it's important for something that is that fast. So again, if you watch this in real time, this is definitely a pose you read because it's one frame, but it's kind of a half frame there, so it's, it gets clearer. And if you watch this, these are the frames that register, those big moments. <laughs> nice. That's when I just go, oh dear, what was the rig like? How simple was that? Probably a pain to animate. This is, I'm always a big fan of when you have characters that are simplified where it's mostly head. Looking at how the heads are animated in terms of head accents and what moves and when. Just a little bit of adjustments depending on those big mouth changes that will influence the head. That's always my big thing about lip sync. You gotta be very careful that you don't just do the body and then just add lip sync and that's it where this feels very isolated and kind of almost copy paste. You can see like how the lips go forward and because of that, there's a little bit of a drop in the head as well. And then as the corners go back, boom, your head goes back a bit. Not saying that mouth shapes and the, the extremes of corners are the thing that will always motivate your head moves. I mean, it can be the opposite, it can be whatever, depending on the performance. But I would definitely not discount that. So if you do have a big thing on a mouth opening this way that potentially could be added or accentuated with a head accent as a complementary thing. And then it goes back to these renders that I absolutely love. Look at that. So cool. Of course, this makes me hungry. Pizza. Definitely cool to see two mouth shapes when someone is eating. The squishiness where if you do have this, where you go down with the shades, but it's still closed. It's like when you say, I don't know, let's say mother, you might have the M shape and then fairly common in student work would be then to relax the mouth shape, open it up as the jaw opens, but then you can keep it for a frame or two where the M shape is still there. So that even though the jaw opens, your mouth is still closed and gets pulled down. Like that shape gets pulled down because of the jaw going down too. So don't forget those little squishy aspects of when uh, when you're doing lip sync. And just a little accents on tongues. Don't forget to animate the tongue. Even if it's a little short thing, you still feel it. I mean, in this case, you see it because it's such a, a TH. And these two, when you have a big shape extension there, 
you have the asymmetry in the shape, but then when he stops, how the shapes relaxes. Because you don't want to just hit a shape and then lock it. You have to think about, well, it's, it's, it depends how realistic you want to go. If it's a, it's a muscle that fires, it can fire quickly, but then it will still come back and relax and ease in. But especially if you have a moving hole, just look at you, that, <laughs> that uh, you don't lock the shapes as you do this. I <laughs> love this. I'm always a big fan when people get slapped. I know this sounds horrible, but <laughs> this just cracked me up. And I wanted to go there frame by frame to see what happens. And it's such a slap that you still have movements in the body and the arms, but it's mostly this goes first, then the head. And then you got the, the stop on the head and the reaction on the hat, which is great. Definitely more stylized as even when the head stops, there's no major reaction on the chest as the head moves and stops. <laughs> I just love that. I don't know why, but cartoon slaps crack me up. Interesting though that he says, okay, I get it. Well, there's no lip sync, so it might just be, it's a couple cases, you know, sometimes in trailers you have sounds or whatever that are from other parts of the movies or later that are just added there as a joke to work in the trailer. It's clearly not talking there, but oh, so good. You can see the offsets in the, in the glasses and then what the hat is doing. So good. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely curious about this movie. Look at that look. Definitely a lot of references of people looking and reacting to things in that trailer. Just seeing the little details and still the asymmetry. Oh, come on. So cool. This would be a great moment for a, uh, a Piper cameo. A little bird running through. Oh, great mechanics too. This would be your, your weight assignment. But instead of a box, it's something like this. That if you're a parent, you definitely know how that feels, a very nice clean hand silhouette there. But I love stuff like that. Again, that the city is alive, it's living, there are people doing separate things and it's not just, you know, a set and then characters like back in the old days. I mean, it's complicated, a lot of work, but I love this. I love the look of all this, so cool. And especially then the contrast when you have the simple look of it, more stylized and then something like this. I love this. Sorry, this is me like silently drawing on things with no explanations, but I love I love going through trailers and looking at things frame by frame and just seeing how people animate things. Because even though I've been doing this for a couple of years, it's like every time I start something I'm like, okay, well, how do I do this? I just feel like I don't know. I don't know how to animate. Let me just look at how professionals do are doing things the right way. I always feel bad when I see shots like this though. Was this one animator and then this was someone else? Or was the animated task to do everything? Although I believe Pixar has background animators and crowd animators and stuff like that. I think at ILM we do everything in a shot unless it's super, super crowded and then Sim will help us. But if we had a shot like this, this would be you doing everything. But then hopefully you have a library of cycles and everything that you can put in and populate. So you don't have to, like one animator has to animate everything and is, is stuck on that shot for I don't know how long, so. Benefiting from a library is always good. Hopefully at the beginning of a show, you create that to save time. Again, I'm going through, I'm always a big fan of hands. One of these days I want to do a clip about Tangled and Frozen. They have really beautiful hand poses in those movies. Cool, cool looks there. And the end. Okay, I'm waiting for someone to Photoshop the Falcon in there. This will be your hyperspace, or this could be almost as kind of the look in the JJ Star Trek. So put in a, an Enterprise or an, a Falcon. Come on, guys. I want to see a GIF, a meme. Definitely count me in. Look at this. I love this. This is such a cool look. Yeah, absolutely love it. I'm so in for this movie. And even on something like this, where it's flat and stylized, the overshoots, the little stretchiness. And especially if it's that simple, you can see how you can simplify the lip sync. The counts where it's just, you don't have to do all that detail, but you just want to focus on your, on your extremes and readability and silhouette, and it still works. Oh, 
so cool. Yeah, absolutely in. Congratulations to everybody who is working on this. This looks fantastic. <laughs> so if you're still watching this, uh, I know I've, with these type of uh, clips and recordings, this is just me nerding out on things. But And I know that during those trailers, trailer analyses, I'm always so nerdy. And I don't know if that's helpful at all to anybody, but I just wanted to share my excitement. And I'm going to go through some other trailers like Connected that just look absolutely fantastic. And you just want to go through their frame by frame and to see the goodness that people are doing. So that's it from me. All right. Thanks.